tone will be zero minus one minute. Zero minus one minute. All observers adjust your goggles or turn away. Do not face the blast area until fireball dissipates. Dr. Coleman. 45 seconds to zero time. Something's wrong. What do you make of it? It might still fire. Perhaps we should call for your brother. I'll make the decision. 30 seconds to zero time. This underground detonation is intended for the study of explosion characteristics. All our tests of 1956 will try to complete our knowledge in this field. Halt the countdown. This is test control. Hold your positions. Do not remove your goggles. The test has been suspended. chances. No, of course not. Something awfully odd. You made the right decision. To wait so long for the right condition and then this. It looked like incompetence with all those observers and army brass. Well, they can wait one more day. Maybe you better talk to them, Healy. Tell them everything they want to know that doesn't violate security. I'll be out in a minute. Now, the rest of you, let's check back through our procedure. Every step. You should have handled this test yourself, Hugh. I thought you could handle it. I still think so. I'm trying to convince your staff of that. I'm trying to convince you. Just take off the hair shirt. A thing like this could have happened to anybody. Maybe it's you that's wearing the hair shirt. That bomb's got to be deactivated. Yes, well, you, Coleman, and Healy can handle it. I can handle it myself. Well, I armed the bomb, I ought to be able to disarm it. It's, it's pretty irregular. It'd be better to send a team. Why? There's one chance in a million of that thing going up under me, maybe even less. But nobody expects... I'm not doing anybody any favors. All right. Take a field phone. We'll have to keep in touch. This is the test officer. Send me a jeep, please. Did you find anything? All is in order here. It'll prove to be something trivial, a detail of mechanics. <sighs> but it should not have happened to you. You know, I speak only for respect, but I must say my conviction. You have allowed your feeling for a brother to hamper your judgment. That's not true. He has skill, much knowledge, but such a test requires experience. He's had experience. What's your complaint, Dr. Coleman? The entire world is watching our work, Hugh. Any failure, even so little, reflects badly on all of us, hinders us. The test has hit a snag. Nobody could have foreseen it. The best thing we can do is stand by while he tries to correct it. Is Mitchell. What's the picture, Dr. Mitchell? A faulty bomb? The bomb was ready to fire, Colonel. It still is. The failure was somewhere in miles of wire or hundreds of instruments. I'd like to notify my office, Mitchell. Can I get through to Washington on this phone? Uh, Mr. Tynan, if you could wait a while, we'd be able to make a fuller report. How long? Well, I can't say exactly. First, the bomb has to be deactivated. Who gets that job? My brother has volunteered. Mitchell, isn't it customary to send several men to the bomb site? Yes, sir. Seems rather risky to me to alter the normal procedure. Alan's control officer, sir. He feels he should accept the risk. I'd like to respect his wishes. I see, of course. Well, it's your responsibility. Ah. Uh. Thank you, Brian. You're sure you want to go alone? Afraid I'll bungle it? I only mean, I'd be glad to help you. 
If it weren't for your help, I wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. It's no mess. There's no reason to reproach yourself. I don't know. The brass in there seems to be showing a pretty lively interest. And the army will want a full report. To say nothing of our distinguished superiors. I'm not worried about the report. No? Well, what are you going to say in your report, Hugh? Are you going to tell the truth? Do you know what the truth is? Yes. I think so. Do you? I've got seven miles to drive. I better get started. The truth. Yes, you, I understand it. It's been a long time coming into the open. The truth is, you've had me headed toward this hole in the desert and a job I don't much care for from the first moment I walked into your office. I'm just trying to help you and bring the two of us a little closer together. It's a great stroke of luck for me to be put in charge of a place like this. At your age, I should think so. I want to share it with you, that's all. You've spent more years in nuclear work than I have. It's time you had a break, too. Well, it's just that... Before giving me this break, I wish you'd consulted me. I don't like being requisitioned like a, a piece of machinery. I knew you'd turn it down if I gave you the chance. It's a wonderful job, Alan. I had a job. Shoving papers around. Washington thought it was important. I'm not mocking it. Of course it was important. It took a good man to fill it. But this is new. This plant has the finest equipment in the world. The staff includes some of the greatest minds. I know who's on your staff. In a couple of months, we're going to Camp Kittredge for one of the biggest series of tests that's ever been staged. I'm asking you to go along as my closest assistant. Help me, but what you mean is you don't want to work with me. I don't mean exactly that. Then what is it? Alan. Two grown men, brothers. The same field of work, practically strangers. No contact for months at a time. Not a hint of warmth or shared interests. It's wrong. Try it here, for a while. Try it. Well, since you've left me no choice, uh, I guess I'll have to try it. I didn't mean to say it just that way. It must have sounded cold, blunt. I have to give him credit. He did his best to make me feel welcome. But he was still manipulating everything, running me, even then. It was hard to realize it, though, meeting Kathleen. Have you two met? Alan, this is Kathleen Lewis, my secretary. You're a lucky man. See that he meets people. He's inclined to be a social failure. Thank you. I doubt if that's quite true. You're a bachelor, I understand. Confirmed. Until just now. You'll do fine. Bachelors stir things up considerably around here. You've met the Colleys? Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, no, don't get up, Doctor. It's a privilege to have you in our community, Dr. Mitchell. Oh, thank you, sir. I once read a brilliant paper of yours. Brilliant. Of mine? Yes, written at the Princeton Institute. Oh, I'm afraid that uh, that paper was written by my brother, Hugh. So? Yes, he's Dr. Mitchell. I'm just plain mister. No degree? Well, I have an M.A. in engineering, of course, but... Don't let it worry you. It'll be a relief to have somebody around here who isn't a genius. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Hugh wrote that paper? But that was years ago. He would have been almost a child. No, oh, being a child never stopped Hugh. He was eight, I think, when he started whipping my ears back. I was 14. I wasn't exactly considered a dolt, but there was one of those science competitions in the public schools. The prize was a complete encyclopedia. Hugh won it in a breeze. You entered the contest, too? I slaved over it. Eight years old. It was hardly a normal boyhood, was it? Well, there was nothing abnormal about it. It was just that Hugh was a very bright kid. I meant you. It's traumatic, I should think, being outdone that way. I was proud of him. Really? I doubt it. It's very simple to understand. Do you own an encyclopedia now? No. Then it's traumatic. 
Otherwise, you would have gone and bought one. It's clear-cut sibling rivalry. Oh, Jim. You can't say that I blame him. I'd be a wreck, too, if I had to be Hugh Mitchell's brother. What makes you think you're not a wreck now? No use denying the basic truths. That would warp any relationship. Hugh winning all of the scholarships and appointments. Everyone saying, when's the old one going to do something? For a scientist, you jump to a good many conclusions, Doctor. Now, now, I own an encyclopedia. You're both welcome to use it. Sometimes amateur psychiatry can get a little tedious. Uh, don't let me drive you away. Well, not at all. I'm just going to get some coffee. I can't pretend it was the first time those ideas had entered my mind. It was just the first time I'd had them rubbed in my face at a buffet supper. Well, no sense worrying about that now. Just take care of this chore at scenic ground zero. And I'll be through with the whole problem once and for all. Hugh? Hugh, are you on? Yes, I can hear you. All right. I'm starting for the shaft now. Just a minute. Alan, listen, whatever it is between the two of us, we can settle it. Look, do you want this thing deactivated or don't you? I'm going down now. Right. What did you say? What is it? Alan, what's the matter? Hugh, this isn't going to be as simple as I thought. I don't know what happened. Maybe a weak section in the shoring that our engineers missed. Or maybe our own truck shook the ground. How much of the bomb is buried? The front, he says. And most of the side. Can you reach the reactor panel? Can you reach the reactor panel? I can't even see it. What can I tell him? There's only one way. Remove the terminal housing. He can't go digging for those wires. He might cross them or jam them. But if he could ease the housing itself free... Alan, I'm coming down to help you. No, you're not. Why are you so stubborn about accepting help? Can't you understand it? Hugh, I've tried to make you understand it. I've tried to explain it to you. Look, you're not going to prove anything by a grandstand gesture. You don't have to redeem yourself if that's what you're thinking. You can't blame yourself for an accident. Hugh, you'll never convince anyone this was an accident as long as you live. Everyone will blame me. And they'll blame you even more. I'll take full responsibility. Take it. <laughs> You can't avoid it. You're farther out on a limb than I am. And we're in it together. And I ought to be down there. It wouldn't do any good, Hugh. Can't you understand? Nobody will ever have any faith in you again unless I prove I know what I'm doing. I think the terminal housing will work free. Anyway, I'm going to have a try. Wait. Wait just a minute. Hugh. Hugh, you and I have been on a spot ever since that first staff meeting in your office. Both of us. But you more than I. Think back, you. Think back. The tests will begin in eight weeks. We'll move our equipment to Kittredge on the 19th. You all understand the procedures. Just one more thing. From now on, I'll ask you to clear everything through Alan. I've appointed him control officer for the tests. But, Hugh, I, I, I just got here. Yes. You'll have your work cut out for you. 
But I know the staff will cooperate. Well, I guess that covers everything. Let's break for lunch. Can I see you for a moment? Sure. It's about your brother, Alan. What's on your mind, Dr. Coleman? I've never questioned your decisions before you. There's no need to now. Do you think it's fair or wise to pass over men who have put years with this project? Alan's put in years, too. In administration, in teaching. But here, where important decisions are made. I'm asking you to have a little patience. I promise you, he'll do a fine job. Yes, I see. Thank you. I'll say good night now, if you don't mind. All oh, right. Sorry I had to stay so late. I'm used to it. Uh, can you give me an approval on this in the morning? In the morning? Unless you want to authorize a delay. No. In the morning, I'll get to it. Good night. Good night. Where's your coat? Look, we've been through this before. I can't leave now. I've got all this work to do. Not past midnight. Nothing's that important. My gosh, it is past midnight. Uh-huh, and I bet you didn't have dinner again tonight. Well, I, I have this report. I've got to check Here, it out. put it on. Kathleen, I can't go anywhere now. I, I haven't finished my work. I'm not dressed. I'm not oh, shaved. Oh, I'll fix I... you something at my place. Come on. I'm here to take care of you. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. As a great beauty, as a timekeeper, and as a cook. You have no business wearing yourself out this way. You say you're doing a fine job. You should relax more. In a few days. Then I'll relax after these tests. After all, there must be something to do around here besides think up bomb designs. Well, certainly. How about skiing in the mountains? Do you ski? A little. Hugh's very fond of the mountains. Maybe the three of us can go sometime. I was thinking of the two of us. Yes, I... I know you were. Alan, I think there's been a misunderstanding. You and I are planning to be married in the spring. wishes we haven't told anyone not even my parents but i thought you and he i mean well brothers usually it slipped his mind no doubt we don't communicate like most brothers would i seem would i seem inconsiderate if i asked you just what you've been up to all these weeks up to I haven't been up to anything. You're practically my brother-in-law. Unfortunately, I wasn't made aware of that fact. I know. I told you I'm sorry. But you thought... You thought... He knew you were tired. He asked me to look after you. Well, I... I appreciate his concern. I hope he was amused to see me making a fool of myself. I didn't mean for you to make a fool of yourself. Hugh loves you, Alan. He's trying to do what's best for you. Hugh doesn't know what's best for me. If a man doesn't know that for himself, no one can force him to learn. He can only meddle and create confusion. He... Alan, wait, don't rush away. Resignation? You can't walk out two days before the tests. Hugh, I don't care about your tests. I don't care about anything except getting back to my own work. Back to something I belong in. And just as soon as possible. Kathleen, phone me. 
But I didn't think you'd quit just because my girl chose to be nice to you. Your girl didn't choose anything. Nobody chooses anything around you. You maneuver people. I felt like a puppet on a string ever since I've been here. That's not... And don't tell me you're bringing two brothers closer together. Why do you think I stay away from you? It's because some twisted vanity in you won't let me live my own life. Vanity? Yes, vanity. Keeping an incompetent like me stumbling along beside you makes you look pretty good. I don't need you to make me look good. I am good. You know it and other people know it. But you resent it. And let it keep you from being any good yourself. Have I committed a crime by being a few years younger than you? Oh, you. Are you going to let it make you quit? Walk out on the best opportunity you've ever had? Being humiliated every step of the way is hardly my idea of a great opportunity. Nobody's going to humiliate you if you'd stop brooding about my head and start using your own. You've done better work here than you've ever done in your life. Not as easily, not as fast as some of the others have done it. But this is what you're capable of. This is what you could have been doing for years if you hadn't been afraid to compete with me. Look, you're not going to fall on your face. I know. Or I wouldn't have stuck my neck out by appointing you. You, you still don't understand, do you? I wish I could make you understand. Yes, that's right. Just a routine action. Nothing to worry about. They'll try again in the morning. They're a skillful bunch out here. Was I wrong, man? Wanting us to work together? Not in wanting it. Enforcing it. You see, Hugh, you have a profound talent. I haven't. But it's you who's been letting that make a difference between us. It's been you who's been feeling guilty. Who's been wearing the hair shirt. All you wanted was to go your own way. You always said so. That's right. And that's the way it's got to be. Till you stop feeling guilty. Then we'll work together. And I'd like nothing more. Because along with everybody else, I think my kid brother is quite a guy. <laughs> <laughs> 